Yeah. This is the Audi S5. I'm renting for a few days out in Atlanta, and uh, we use the app Turo, and uh, I wanted to pick a car that was a little sporty and a little different, and something that I've never driven before, and something that I wanted to experience. So I, I wanna say it's not gonna blow your socks off because it's a 10-year-old sort of semi-high performance car, but it is a V8, it does have all-wheel drive, and it is a two-door sports car. Keyless entry, push button. Starts right up, and it's funny because this car does have 99,000 miles on it, which is uh, a lot for an Audi. So I, I don't even want to know any costs that the, the owner has sunk into this car to keep it running, but it does sound a little rattly. It does sound like it has almost 100,000 miles on it, but um, it is pretty solid for what it is for being 10 years old. So cut. So what is the S5 like to drive? And I will say, this car is not super rough to drive, but it's definitely, you can tell that it's not soaking up the bumps. Like the suspension is not made like the new Audis are. So it's a little more clunky. And um, I, the first thing that I think of, because this is a, you know, a sport shiftable car, it's not the manual. What the hell are you laughing at? I just got my head on the window. This does have an automatic technically, and you can put it in sport mode. Generally speaking, the automatic is usually fine, like I'm, it's not being obtrusive, and it will shift down if it needs to, like I need to accelerate to go through this intersection here, and it does have the power. However, when you're trying to like merge onto the highway, unless you really give it some gas, you turn right, oh yeah, shit. Yeah, turning right, this oh is north God, out. Was not 67 going down a third. tracker on it so I don't really want to go too crazy. At lower speeds it's easier to get the power when you need it but at highway speeds it's already in fifth or sixth gear and it doesn't really shift down when you want it to so popping this over into the sport mode will keep it you know higher revving and it will eventually shift for you if you forget so if you slow down to a light you don't need to necessarily downshift uh, with the paddle shifters here which are just fine. Um, but this isn't anything like, you know, a PDK or even um, a dual clutch in the newer BMWs or something like that, which I know you got, a lot of you guys are familiar with. So um, putting this in manual mode, it's good, but I will tell you that it is a little clunky, especially when you're downshifting. Um, and I have no idea if that's typical for this system, but, I, you know, because it does have 100,000 miles on it, so it could easily be the fluid or just the gears not being, you know, new. Um, and just being kind of abused, especially because it's a rental car. Um, it seems in pretty good shape, but uh, you can definitely tell that some people that don't really know a lot about cars have been uh, curving the wheels and doing uh, driving over parking bumpers and stuff like that. As far as features, um, you know, I wouldn't say that if you're buying this car now, it's a 10 year old Audi, you're probably not buying it for like the highest tech. It does have a backup camera, which is nice. And honestly, like the screen on it is not half bad. It has backup sensors, um, heated seats. I mean, it has a lot of normal stuff that you'd inspect from like a German car. The screen in the middle of these two dials is actually really nice. It gives you, you know, the, uh, the digital readout of your speed, it gives you the temperature, it gives you the normal stuff, and it's actually, it's in really good quality. Uh, the screen is good quality, it's not some crappy like dot matrix. Like, the screen in this is much nicer than the one in my M3 that's in the center console. So, I mean, generally speaking, it's definitely a livable car, but you just have to be ready probably for the maintenance. There's a little acceleration, but when it shifts, you can, it like stutters when it shifts. It's kind of, it's kind of unfortunate. I don't know if that's normal. Um, well, let's see, so we're in third gear. I'll go down to second. The unfortunate part is you don't get to really hear much about the V8, like, because it's stock. And it's an older car, you know, they weren't really all excited about having everyone, you know, hear the cars and everything like that. We are driving, like, downtown Atlanta, downtown Midtown. We're navigating these tight streets. The Audi feels fine. I mean, it's not a big car. It's a car that was built 10 years ago, like I keep saying. 
and um, the only thing that I will say is that the side mirrors are huge like I don't know if like I'm used to really small side mirrors these are like they're almost too big they're like as big as in you know in a truck so when you actually look out the window to look you know that direction not necessarily looking for your mirror the mirror is in the way of other stuff which is kind of weird um, I don't know if it's my driving position or what, but um, that is something that I would definitely note about this car is it's not really a huge deal. It is nice to have a big mirror. I don't naturally want to shift this car a ton, um, but it does have a little get up. I don't, is this even a one way? Am I driving in the middle of the road right now? Probably. All right, so let's do, let's do a little acceleration run. These people. On the side street. I mean, it gets up to speed. When when you're accelerating from a stop, it definitely gets up to speed, kind of how you'd want it to. Um, but then, then it went, it just shifted down from four, three, two, and then it'll go back to one on its own, just because it's one of those things where it's like most people that buy this car are not necessarily worried about uh, the shifting on the steering wheel. So to wrap up this video, um, I know you guys aren't like super interested in Audi. You look guys like the M3, you guys like the Jeep detailing and stuff like that but we have the opportunity and the s5 it's not crazy expensive honestly on Turo in Atlanta it was like just over 70 bucks a day to rent this which is barely more expensive if it is more expensive than a regular rental car like some Nissan some cheap new Nissan or whatever so I would definitely recommend checking that app out and uh, this has been good so far the only thing that I really hate about this car is that I hear rattles in the back and uh, yeah see it's in third and I'm like three-quarter throttle and it's barely accelerating so it doesn't even know what to do it's in manual mode too so all right so I think that is gonna wrap it up uh, unfortunately we didn't have any people to race in this video I know it's crazy shit but we had the boring, the boring Audi video, so thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And, um, leave a comment below if you want to know anything else about my thoughts on this car, which, um, like I mentioned, is pretty good. But uh, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time. I buy a car, I must buy one with a pussy magnet. He means a, a car that women will like. Yes, but where you keep this magnet? No, there's no is... magnet, that was just, a t he means the vehicle. Hey! <laughs> the S5 attracts cats. If I buy a car, I must buy one with a pussy magnet. How are you doing? Can I pet you? Hello? <laughs>